Good morning, B32, and welcome to our first module. I think almost everybody got through the orientation module, and I sent out an email that was a checklist. Um, at the bottom of the email, I said, respond to me and let me know something. And so I only got two responses. So it makes me wonder, are you guys getting the emails? If you are getting the emails, send me a response so I know. And if you're not getting the email, check your spam folder to see if it's in there, because sometimes that happens. Make sure you add both my email addresses to your contacts list so that doesn't happen. And, um, and then send me a response and let me know what's up, because I'm really curious about that. Usually I get a lot of responses back. Anyhow, this week is a really interesting week, and it's universal design for learning. And one of the challenges most teachers have is we're not instructional designers. We don't have a background in how to put things together in a way that uh, makes sense for students. We just sort of pick it up as we go, right? Whether that's for in-class content or online content. And so this week, part of what we're going to be looking at is exactly how to do that. So let me share screen and I will show you what we're looking at this week. And I'm not going to go over each and every detail because there's a lot of content there, but I am going to talk about the content in just a second. So scroll down and you might notice there's the orientation chapter. I'm kind of experimenting with this mode myself. So I discovered in design tools, you can do this thing where it'll show the whole list uh, of what's in the module, all the pages. I thought that was kind of useful. And, but if you go to the future modules, they're not open yet. So you're not going to see those. Anyhow, you can go down to module one, click on the introduction. Now the introduction is where this video is gonna be right here. So you're already watching it, but I have a note here saying, come back. So I'll fix, I'll change that later. What I did on the module checklist is I have a list of the dates so that you can plan things out. Now, remember I said these modules are in two week units with the exception of uh, the accessibility module, but everything else is two weeks. And when that happens, there's a tendency for things to get put off. You know, like I know we wouldn't do that as teachers, but you know, our students do that all the time, right? You put a due date, they push it off to the very end. They wait till the weekend it's due to actually start to look at it. You know, and we all know that that's a really bad habit, right? So we wouldn't do that. Definitely don't wait until the end to look at this because you're gonna need some time to think through all the resources and to make some adjustments to your own class. Now, a couple of people told me that you needed Canvas um, shells. And so I'm gonna submit that today and hopefully you'll get that connected up. They're usually pretty fast in setting those up for you. But pay attention to the deadline. So there's three, basically three things in this module uh, to deal with. There's group introductions, there's a review of course discussion, and then there's an assessment. Um, where you're going to actually create something. And we have an example for you so you can see what that might look like. Now, if you go down the list, you'll notice the things that are the do things, the do things, they have an icon. So hopefully that'll help you just visually see. The rest of it is all content. The first thing to jump into is this introduction to learning pods. So I've placed you all in groups. I've kind of randomized the groups and there's four or five people in each group. So it's small enough to be manageable. And this isn't a group project. So like, don't panic, no group project. But this is for the discussion groups. Um, one of the things I have found is that when you put students in smaller discussion groups, they tend to engage better. I mean, just think about it. If you come to a discussion forum in a class that's got 20 or 30 or 40 students, before you know it, there's a couple of hundred posts there. And that's almost unmanageable. Like, I, I don't know about you, but when I look at that, my eyes just glaze over and I can't even deal with it. But if there's only four or five people in a group, then you can have a discussion and kind of this learning pod idea. Anyhow, that's what the groups are about. And one of the things you're going to look at in your discussion here is this idea of communities of practice and maybe communities of practice that you've actually been involved in at some point. So a community of practice is just an organization or a group that gathers their knowledge somehow, and they work together to build knowledge. Uh, there's a whole big thing. I did my whole master's degree project revolving around this idea of communities of practice. There's a link here that will give you a brief overview, but I'm pretty sure you've probably been involved in one. So part of what you're um, 
introduction discussion here to your learning pod is going to ask you about that. So you have to do the quick check to get by the next thing. I wonder if it'll let me do it. I wonder if I can jump in student view. Uh, let me jump in student view. There are some perks to being the teacher. All right. So um, here's your uh, activity for the learning pod. And you should be able to see those. It gives you some information. I'm not going to be able to see them. Well, you should have an icon out here that says groups. OK. You can also go to the people tab. And you'll see groups. And you'll see the learning pods. And so you'll have access to the ones that you are enrolled in. You're only enrolled in one. So it's three learning pods, OK? So that's where you can find that on the people tab. Anyhow, in your learning pod, let me back up here. We'll go to um, introduce yourself, describe one experience with a community of practice you've had, list one hope you have for the group. People have pretty low expectations for groups. And I'd like you to think a little higher than that. This can be, this is the same group you'll be in for the whole class, all right? There'll be a couple of different discussions. You'll be giving feedback to each other. What would you like to see out of that experience? So after you've done your introduction and there's some dates there for the reply, we're going to get into the content areas. I'm just going to kind of fly through these pretty quick because they're very comprehensive, but I will make one point. Um, the principles of UDL, we're going to look at engagement, representation, and action and expression. So there's a page for each of those that will give you some details. But on all these pages, you know, you're going to see lots and lots of resources. And the feedback that I've heard in the past is that, oh my gosh, there's so many links. Like, how am I going to look at all the links? Don't look at all the links. Here's my advice to you. Scan over, like if it's in an accordion like this, that's probably a good thing to read, okay? Or watch the video or whatever's in there. But as far as the resource links, whoops, I didn't actually mean to open that. As far as the resource links, what you're gonna do is find something you're really interested in and then you can dig in deeper. We're just giving you some, I don't know, some just some extra stuff. Like if there's something you wanna know more about, we wanna make sure there's some good resources for you. But don't feel like you have to read every single thing. All right, so each page is going to be set up in a similar way. You know, here's the why part. Here's some strategies. You know, again, here are some details. So this is kind of the, the content, the textbook part, I guess, if you want to call it that. There'll be a quick check. And then again, some more resources. So the resources don't feel like you got to read all of them. All right, so I'm going to jump ahead a little. See if the quick check will let me do that. There's one for representation. There's one for the action and expression. There's some information about a UDL syllabus with some examples here that you can look at that includes all of these areas and again, some more resources. Um, there's some considerations. So some things you can consider in some different areas here. So um, make sure to look through that. And then we get to the discussion about this. So on this discussion, the first part is not due until next Sunday. Okay, so I don't have my calendar in front of me, but I usually do. Anyhow, before on 4-4, on April 4th, we're already almost in April, and on April 4th. So you're gonna post this discussion. And then what you're gonna do is respond to these different things. So you're gonna look at your own class and you're gonna talk about it in these different areas. Okay, you don't have to answer all the questions, you can write this out, you can record it, whatever you want to do. Um, this is set up so that only you, you can only see your group. So you're not going to see like everybody. You'll just see the other four or five people. It's really small and reasonable. And then by the following week, please respond to at least two of your classmates. But you know what? It's a small group. Feel free to respond to all of them. Um, but respond with some ideas for teaching strategies that they might be able to incorporate, okay, based on the content we were just reading based on universal learning design. So that's sort of the group piece of it. But what you're really going to do, and this is what's going to take you some time. So you want to make sure you read through this clearly. You understand. I'll show you where you can post questions about it. Um, what you're going to do is take your own, um, your own content, 
okay? Something that you've already done, that you've already created, and you're gonna upgrade it based on these guidelines. So there's some guidelines, there's a progression rubric here. Um, you can do a video example. And if you click the, if you click this, there's actually an example on the preview of assessments. And I'm gonna to try to add ones for these other ones as we get closer. But if you get into integrating UDL, you're gonna see there's a really nice video example of how you might submit it. You're gonna say, here's what it looked like, and here's what it looks like now, and here's what I did, and here's why I did it. You can write this up. I mean, there's a written option. You can definitely write it up, but it might be easier to screen share because if you write it up, we're looking at you know probably eight to 12 paragraphs um, a bunch of pages, a whole bunch of images that you have to insert, but you definitely have the possibility of doing that. And then there's different support resources down here in the rubric. So this will be due on the 11th also. So this is a two week module. You've got plenty of time to do it as long as you start early. Now, let me stop sharing here because what if you have questions? Like what if you need to know what to do? How do you know what to do? Let's jump over to Discord for that. So I'm going to screen share. And this is a really good, quick way. I mean, I'll be honest with you, discussion forums are my least favorite thing. And I tend not to jump in unless I'm asked specifically to jump in to a discussion forum. And I'll go through and I'll read what you guys are writing. But unless you ask my input there and let me know you ask my input there, I'm probably not going to jump in too much. However, I'm almost always available here on our, our uh, Discord server. And so make sure you look for the EDUC B32 CURTI class. We do have one that's kind of a general everybody that's taking this you know, B32, but that one's not specifically for us. Make sure that you look at the one that is specifically for us. You can tell it's the only one that's got the cute little icons on it, at least right now until other people discover that. And so on the help desk, there um, are a couple of things. Well, on this, on our server, there's a couple of things. And so this two minute tech tip, which is actually about an eight minute tech tip, I give you a tour of Discord and how to use it, how to optimize it, things like, you know, how to hide the member list, how to show the member list, how to collapse things to make it a little less cluttered or feel a little less cluttered, how to reply. There's some different things you can do here. And I also kind of pull back the curtain on how I manage students here. There's a couple of good tips. So anyhow, help desk is where I post some good stuff, but it's also where you can ask a question. So use the help desk to say, hey, I'm stuck on this thing, or I have a question about that thing, or um, you know, can you take a look at this? The help desk is a good place for that. Not only because I'll see it, but other people in the class will see it, and they might be able to help also. The other category to look at is humanizing your class. And this is going to be a theme throughout. And there was a lot to go through this week, so I'm going to wait until next week to open up this um, try it activity idea. But basically, this will be a place where you can share things you're doing with your own students to help humanize your class. And I started it. I started off. So I said, one thing I share is this visual roster. The reason I ask you guys for pictures is for the visual roster. And that's why it's super important you fill out that survey and I get your picture. Because when you click on this, you'll see why. Otherwise, you have kind of a cartoon face and I don't know what you look like. Anyhow, so we can all share things we're doing to humanize our class. One of the nice things about Discord is you can segment discussions. So if you have something that's not completely related, you're not sure where it goes, stick it in random but related. If it has to do with teaching or learning, put it here. Humanizing your class, keep that focus on things you're doing to connect with your students and to make them know that you know they're there. Help desk, only post questions there that you need help with. That'll help us keep track. We've got our introductions, that's where the videos are going. Announcements, that's where I put things. That's, so that's a read only. But let me give you a little bit of um, Discord etiquette. When you read a post, and it's not gonna let me respond to my own post. Oh, I guess it will. When you read a post, leave a reaction. So you notice that when I hover over the top right, it says add reaction. You got a whole bunch. You can search for things. Leave a reaction because that lets the writer know that you saw it. So when you watch all those introduction videos, if you like it, leave a reaction so they know somebody watched it. 
And then the general channel is where we put, I, I had you post something here, um, you know, just to check off that you made it there and could post. And so that's good. But from here on out, once you've done that, this is just open. This is an open channel. Anything doesn't have to relate to anything. It could be something cool you saw or whatever. But make good use of this because I, I chat with students all the time here where they'll send me a message and you can start it off by just clicking my name. Well, I can't click my own name, obviously. Let me find somebody here. You can just click somebody's name, send them a message. When you do, the messages go out here. So add here to the home button. There's a whole bunch of messages here. Okay, that's where you'll find the, the private messages. Anyhow, um, super good resources this week. Super interesting topic. Um, it's a little bit of work, but you've got two weeks to do it. And I'll set up some Zoom times now that I've got almost everybody's survey. Um, it, it's narrowing down to a couple of times based on the people that have submitted so far. So I'll set up some office hour times and I'll set up, uh, we're gonna have a couple of reflections coming down the pipeline probably in week four and week seven. And so I'll use those times to set those up. And I'm, I'm really excited about what you guys are gonna work on this week. It's gonna be a lot of fun.